Some key changes that had we known about them would have made life a lot easier the first time. And we're going to go through some of those changes so you can order one um, similarly. But the end product should be uh, that you can have one of these cars for a reasonable amount of money and be able to drive electric. So let's take a look at the uh, new roller we've got from Special Editions Inc. Um, of the 1957 Porsche 356A Speedster Replica and see what some of those key features are. Let's talk about a few of the features of the roller that uh, we think are important because we had to do them last time. Start off with, we've got uh, four-wheel disc brakes. Uh, we're going to use regenerative braking on this uh, version, but I still like having four-wheel brakes with another four or five hundred pounds of batteries. Um, I love these uh, headlight grills, but more importantly, we're using uh, 6000K by Xenon headlights, which Special Editions uh, installed for us this time. So that's going to be a little bit of a savings. We also have LED turn signals. In fact, all of our lights in the car, with the exception of the headlights, are light-emitting diodes. And that uses considerably less of our pack power, while I think providing a little better light. Under the hood, Special Editions has built this special box here in the front. That's 11 and a quarter inches wide, 12 inches deep, and 28 and three quarters of an inch wide. Well, it is now. Our box, they got us a, they cut us a, about a quarter of an inch, but with a proper hammer, it's that size now. But they're going to make these boxes the exact size to hold 16 of the Sky Energy 190 amp hour cells, 180 amp hour cells or the uh, Thunder Sky 160s. And so we can get the, in fact, we've already put the cells in here um, so you can see kind of the layout of the cells. We also don't have a gas tank up under the uh, carpet. And that gives us an area where we can mount our chargers, uh, some of our instrumentation, and a heating system to heat the cockpit. So we're not gonna have to uh, craft our battery box in the front, which was a lot of problems, and uh, remove the gas tank. We'll be able to install equipment up front quite capably. The cockpit is a place where you can spend a lot of money. Uh, we've got good leather seats, but a lot of the things, the steering wheel, the shift knobs, the uh, ivory knobs on the dash, uh, we spent a lot of time chasing down the first time. This time, they've installed all of them for us with some nice cocoa mats and carpeting that I think goes very nicely with the color of the car. We're going to try to use our combi gauge this time as part of our instrumentation system. And we do have uh, a flip-up stereo that has a motorized screen that comes out and flips up. And ideally, we'll have some instrumentation displaying on that as well uh, for some of the electric car. You don't need to go to the uh, extent we did on the steering wheel and the knobs if you don't want to. As I say, you can vary the price a little bit by uh, moving around uh, what you put on the interior of the car. We got the tonneau type top and, of course, the convertible top. And... Uh, so we like the way they've got it set up. Um, we did have a special switch added, a two position switch here for our heating system that we're gonna use. And the rest of it's pretty much uh, stock stuff. The Porsche logo, you're not gonna be able to get from back. We uh, trace that down ourselves uh, for the horn button, which you can do as well. It depends on how much you want it to look like a, a Porsche. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, I just like that uh, horn ring look, um, but you can get any number of other ones. In fact, we don't have it on our original uh, uh, Porsche. So that's the interior. Nothing really special there except we did have them install a uh, stereo with a, a motorized flip-up screen. And that, if you specify the, you know, the Rickard uh, electric 
uh, signature edition, that's what, what it would come with. At the rear of the car, we have a couple of interesting items. One, as I said, our turn signals, brake lights, backup light, and our license plate light are all uh, light-emitting diode light bulbs, which will uh, dramatically decrease our current draw on our DC 12-volt system. This is a backup camera that connects to that flip-up motorized screen stereo in the front. Our objective here is to minimize the impact on the 1957 look of our dash area, but this car is very difficult to see out the back of if you have the top up. So a backup camera is pretty much uh, a requirement. Inside, we've had, had them cut away most of the fiberglass where our battery boxes are going to be. We're going to have to do a little trimming. Uh, as this goes along, we hope to get uh, Special Editions a little more involved in this area for the uh, uh, Rickard Electric roller specification. But right now, we have to install the motor yet and the uh, controller and, and size the battery boxes. So we left it pretty much this way. One of the most important changes we made to the car is actually back here with the transaxle. It's a uh, um, swing axle type, last made in 1968 with the short shafts. Uh, instead of the 388 ring and pinion that we had in the original Speedster, we've gone to a very unusual 3.44. And we've gone to some different gearing. I'll have to, I've got it here next to my heart, heart, heart somewhere. Oh, here it is. Um, a 2.64 to one in first gear, 1.93 to one second gear, 1.14 to one third gear and a very high geared uh, 0.70 uh, to one fourth gear. In driving our original Porsche, uh, we found that it's most comfortable to take off in third gear and shift into fourth, but we have a fourth speed transmission. The developments in transmissions, certainly in the VW transaxles in the years since, have been to uh, lower gears, closer gear ratios, and higher engine RPMs. And many of the VW trans, uh, motors, style motors that they drop into these rollers conventionally have uh, RPM ranges up, oh, 4,600 RPM. Most electric motors, and certainly uh, ones in the affordable range that we uh, uh, are looking for, are in the zero to 5,500 RPM range, total motor RPM. But most of the torque is actually made from zero to about 3200 rpm i would say 3000 or 3200 and then the torque starts to drop off so our top speed on the original mini was 95 miles an hour by going to uh, the other direction from an internal combustion engine We've gone to this transaxle with very high gears uh, like they used to do for the low uh, RPM uh, VW type uh, cars in the early 60s. And that's going to hopefully shift our RPM band uh, to where we can at least get second gear into play and perhaps even first and get back to a true four-speed transmission and and make uh, use of the leverage that we get with that transmission for a higher uh, top speed and a more usable first and second gear. But we had to go to the extreme ends of what was available in gearing on a transaxle. That makes it if you do this mm, transaxle with the welded gears and the extra plates and to strengthen it enough to take that kind of torque, uh, it winds up being a little bit more expensive transaxle. So when you order this roller, they're going to tag you a little bit on the transmission. My advice is to go ahead and pay it because I think this is going to dramatically alter the performance of this car by shifting us back down below that uh, 3200, 3400 RPM range where our torque starts to fall off and we'll have much better acceleration and at top speed we're shooting for 110 miles per hour which was about what the original uh, speeds were on the Porsche 356A with the 1600 engine 
as it was shipped in 1957. I think we can achieve all that and be very similar to that original sports car. With a very low center of gravity from 